questions to the vagus nerve are very complex. However, for the purpose of cranial nerve testing, we focus on its motor supply to the pharynx and the larynx. Cranial nerves 9 and 10 get tested together. Start by asking the patient, can you swallow for me? Which they can, which is the very simple test of pharynx and the larynx. Next, get them to say the letters A, E, I, O, and U. These require movements of the soft palate, and if there is a cranial nerve lesion, these letters will come out slurred. Can you please repeat A, E, I, O, U? A, E, I, O, U. Which is fine. Now, you want to look at the movement of the palate when the patient says, ah, you're expecting that the pharynx will rise equally on both sides and the uvula will stay in the midline. To do this, you will need your tongue depressor and your pen torch. Can you please open your mouth for me? And say ah. Thank you. If there is a lesion with one of the nerves, the uvula will deviate away from the side of the lesion as it's pulled up by the normal side. You can also test the sensation of the palate by just touching the roof of the mouth. And lastly, it's the gag reflex. The gag reflex is uncomfortable, and so warn patients before you do it. To perform a gag reflex, you will need two tongue depressors, one for the tongue, and one to touch the back of the palate on both sides. This may be a bit uncomfortable, but we'd have followed us. So this patient doesn't have a gag reflex. The final sign you may notice earlier in your examination is that during facial nerve testing, when they puff out the cheeks, you may hear air blowing through the nose because they are unable to close off the access to the nasopharynx. We then move on to testing the 12th cranial nerve, the hypoglossal nerve. You ask the patient to stick out their tongue and you're looking for wasting or fasciculations for a lower motor neuron lesion, or a bunched up spastic tongue for an upper motor neuron lesion.